Hi, and welcome to the second session of our series called The World is Not Enough. Uh, this session is called Dependence, and we're continuing in our look of what it means to be truly saved. Now, theologians uh, break up our whole Christian experience into two big categories. And I want to use some big words here, but really they're quite simple. Um, the whole series of the book of John, we are talking about justification. Justification is what happens when uh, we put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ and what He has done, and we are saved. Not because of our own good works that we should boast, right? That's what Ephesians 2 um, says. But because of what Jesus Christ did. It's got nothing to do with whether we're good or we're bad, whether we're Nicodemus who is really religious and keeps all kinds of laws, or whether we're like the Samaritan woman who's living uh, with somebody and has had like five different husbands. Justification occurs because Jesus is really good. But then sanctification, so there's justification, and then what happens after you're saved? we get changed to be more and more like Christ. And so theologians say there's justification and then there's sanctification. And sanctification is uh, the Holy Spirit working in your life, speaking to you. You're already saved and so parts of your lives are changing and growing in God. Now, we want to be really clear. This series uh, is a look at justification. And even are you saved? Because there is no point in talking about sanctification, in attending Bible studies and learning more about God and praying. There's no point in uh, living a nicer, better, more good boy life if you are not saved. Because these sanctification things, they don't save you. Um, and so in today's Christian world, we are surrounded by people who are in churches and are in home groups that live out the sanctification because they hear all kinds of messages. Oh, you must tithe. Oh, you must serve in a church. You must reach out to people. They hear all those things, but some of them haven't really actually been justified by faith. They actually haven't been saved. And so today, we are going to talk about what true salvation is. We're going to talk about dependence. You see, last week, we looked at maybe the tension between being good and God's grace is good. Being good, being Nicodemus, and God's grace is good, being the Samaritan woman. I want to put it to you that salvation is available for both of those categories. Uh, you hear John, um, a lot of people talk about believe in Jesus. Unfortunately, the word believe has been really corrupted today. People say, I believe in fairies, I believe in love, and believe has these connotations of a, a mental kind of acknowledgement of Jesus. Be that word believe in its original form was meant to be more than that. It was supposed to anchor us in on a complete faith and trust in Jesus. Like how I would place my trust on a, on a table or a platform and you'd stand on it so that if that table breaks, well, you fall. That's what belief in Jesus was supposed to be like. I, I want to put to you a better word for us to use during this series. A word that I want you to ask yourself in your own life. That word, putting your belief, could be translated as putting your faith in, or putting your trust in, your whole trust in. I think a better word today is dependence. Are you dependent on Jesus? Because if you are dependent on Him, then you are saved. Um, let's read John chapter 15. It talks about it in a very good analogy. John 15 verse 1 says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, He prunes, that it might bear more fruit. Now, that word takes away means completely remove. That means it's not part of 
right? So any branch that does not bear fruit he is not part even of the vine. But every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. And that's like the sanctification process. He, he molds us so that it might bear more fruit. Verse 3, Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, says Jesus. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. From apart from me, you can do nothing. Do you see these words of dependence? The branch is totally dependent on the vine. If anyone does not abide me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered and thrown into a fire and burned. That is a metaphor. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. But this, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. How do you prove that you're His disciples? As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. He makes it pretty simple. He's trying to explain what abide means. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. There needs to be in the life of a Christian dependence on Jesus. I think if you're not dependent on Jesus, you're not saved. You might go to church. You might read the Bible. You might be a leader even. You might go on. But if Jesus is not the Lord of your life, if He's not the person you depend on, then we're not in the same category. I want to put it to you, if we could be just honest for a second. Maybe you've come to home group. Uh, maybe you've been at church for a while. Or maybe you're just exploring. When you wake up in the morning, do you go, Jesus, I need you. Can you guide me? Can you lead me? Because in today's day and age, um, there is a category of Christians that is growing faster than any other Christian. It is called the believing, non-practicing Christian. We now have people who fully believe every single thing that uh, you and I might believe. But because their lives are not actually dependent on Jesus, they don't wake up in the morning and re do devotionals and go, Jesus, what do you want me to do? How do I live today? They believe, but they don't practice. Um, it is like sometimes when I do counseling, I, I had the weirdest counseling session once, uh, many years ago. I sat down with a husband who was physically abusing his wife. He had had an affair as well, and, and he was at a point of repentance, but it was his third or fourth time repenting. And he said to me, Chris, you don't understand. I love my wife. I love my wife. And I said to him, no, you don't understand. I love my wife too. But we're using the same words and meaning different things. Is Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life? Do you depend on Jesus? I want to put it to you that it is so possible for us to use the same words but have completely different outcomes. Let's take some time today to explore what it means to be really dependent on Jesus because that is at the core of salvation itself. God bless.